Colossal used the same technology or some version of it that they used to make the dire wolf to make to clone red wolf. So no matter what happens now, we'll never lose red wolf. So as long as that company exists, now does that, that make sense? Yeah, it does yeah. make sense. That's and a huge win. It, I, it sounds like it's a huge win. The question that I still have on any of this, and I don't know, like, you know, people like to point fingers at this stuff because you're working on something so new and it's controversial or whatever. But like, I want people working on things. Like, I think I think it's cool to try to find something we haven't done before. That's how right. the human race moves forward. But right. like, if you clone a red wolf, yeah, you're cloning its DNA. Mm -hmm. You're cloning its sequencing. So you're obviously cloning its looks, its features, all those things. But can you clone its evolution? So we, you and I were just saying this off camera, but by the way, alluding to it, so we might as well go into it. But you are an advisor for Colossal. Yeah. Who I had Ben and Matt James in here together yep. a few months ago. Fascinating stuff. We're going to have, I know, at least Matt coming back. Good. I think in the fall. I was talking to him. He was here for like two days in July, so we couldn't make it work. But he's going to come back because there was still so much more to go there. But yeah, we're getting in, we're getting into weird territory here. For where, sure. You yeah. Know, Colossal's weird. I mean, what they're doing is weird, but it's cool. <laughs> what made you want to be on it as an advisor? Well, I I found out about it very early on, you know, like in the – because everything I've done, like what we've been talking mm -hmm. about is in this – not everything, but a lot of it is in the space of – looking for extinct animals, right? And Colossal is literally a de-extinction company. Mm -hmm. So Ben and, and Matt together, they reached out to me, and Matt's become a very good friend, but they reached out to me together. They both are, really, but they both reached out to me very early on when there was probably 25 people like brainstorming and mm -hmm. working at Colossal and just said, hey, you know, with you being this kind of figure in finding extinct species, would you be willing to be a part of what we're doing? And I had my reservations, like I think anybody does when you hear about what they're doing. And I was like, is this real? Is this some Theranos thing? Like, what is this? And some Theranos. Well, you know, it sounds crazy. Like now they've proven themselves, yeah. but at first it sounded crazy. Yeah. And um, uh, we just had a few conversations and I just said, I'd love to be an advisor. You know, I'd love to help you if you do make woolly mammoths and dodos and thylacine and all these things, I'd love to help come up with the plans as to what to do with them from a conservation standpoint mm. so that it's imp impactful and has big purpose to the planet. And something that I don't know if they talked about on your show or not, but they they also do a lot of good conservation work. That was the that was the key for yeah. me. And that's what I want to continue to see moving forward because if, and we can get into the nitty gritty with this because you've been involved for a while, but if in fact trying to make a woolly mammoth and the work you're doing on just in gene sequencing before you even make a species can help solve the problem of, I forget what it's called, but like the elephant's herpes disease that kills 20% yeah, of, right. Mm -hmm. If it can help solve something that kills 20% of all current elephants and regardless of what we figure out or don't figure out with a woolly mammoth, that research legitimately is able to do that and, and help you know, such a magnificent creature in conservation right now, yeah. then to me, there's something that's very worth it there. That's it. I mean, a good example is, you know, the dire wolf news, right? You saw that, yeah. that all came out. Big, loud, splashy news, controversy, everything else. That's great. And I think it's really interesting. It's interesting proof of concept, whatever. Dire wolves aren't going back into the wild. Into the wild. But the thing that didn't make the news that should have is the same technology they used for that, they used to clone Gray Red Wolf. Red Wolf. Yeah, Wolf. North yeah, American yeah, yeah. Red Wolf. And it sounds like you guys talked about it, so I won't go into detail, but like... No, that, no please do, because people got to hear this who haven't heard that sure. episode. Sure. Well, just long story short, they use, North American Red Wolf's the most critically endangered wolf species on planet Earth. And Colossal used the same technology, or some version of it, that they used to make the dire wolf to make, to clone Red Wolf. So no matter what happens now... We'll never lose Red Wolf so as long as that company exists. Now, does that, that make sense? Yeah, it does yeah, make sense. That's and a huge win. It, I, it sounds like it's a huge win. The question that I still have on any of this, and I don't know, like, you know, people like to point fingers at this stuff because you're working on something so new and it's controversial or whatever. But like, I want people working on things. Like, I think, I think it's cool to try to find something we haven't done before. That's how right. the human race moves forward. But right. like, if you clone a Red Wolf, yeah. You're cloning its DNA. Mm -hmm. You're cloning its sequencing. So you're obviously cloning its looks, its features, all those things. But can you clone its evolution? 
Meaning, like, I'm going to make something up right now. This sure. isn't real. But let's say Red Wolves could could jump 30 feet because they, you know, over millions of years trained themselves in their environment to be able to jump 30 feet away from a fucking bison that was chasing them or yep. something. Yep. Can you really clone that trained behavior just by grabbing its DNA sequencing and saying, boom, we cloned my understanding of it, and I don't know because I'm not a geneticist. I told you I basically failed those classes in college. <laughs> but my understanding of it is the hardware is the same. The software is different. Yeah. So we can make another Julian. Well, not me. They maybe can make another Julian. Are you going to be a podcast host who has the same knowledge and skills and personality that you do now? I don't think so because that's software, right? Yeah. So you could still jump as high as you can jump. You'll be the same height, same color hair, same eye color. Um, but your software is completely pro it's it's just different it's open to interpretation that's my understanding of it so does that mean like again you and i aren't the science experts here so just looking at it from like what is this rather than the the software that goes into it does that mean that it's a new type of the same thing oh i see what you're saying or no the same so thing. i think if you took that cloned red wolf and put it out with other red wolves, it would not stand out as any different. Does that make sense? Yes. It would just it be another red wolf as part of it. Now, the dire wolves, you know, they're genetically modified from gray wolf, blah, blah. That's different. And that was a, I think that was just a proof of concept. That's my understanding. Yeah. What that. do you mean that's different, though? Like, because there's no other dire wolves to put them right, out with. Right, You've right. brought something back that wasn't there. You're starting from scratch, in a sense. Yes. Whereas cloning a red wolf, is you could take that red wolf and put it out with the pack. It'll get accepted by the others. It'll learn the same behaviors. It'll hunt the same way, howl the same way, den the same way, pup the same way. It'll be a red wolf. Because they exist right now. And we're right. working with things that actually we can quite literally copy and paste. That's right. And to me, like a very good example of that is the northern white rhino. There's only two females left of that species yeah. in the world. If Colossal and I think BioRescue, and I think there's a third partner, but forgive me if I'm getting them wrong, are working to clone that. If they can clone a male and they can use their crazy blah, blah, genetic engineering stuff to add diversity to the species, the genetic diversity, they can save that species. To me, I'm getting the goosebumps again because that is the technology, yes, that real. is what the technology is for. Like the fact that human beings have fucked up so badly. Do you care if I swear? Just You're in sure. New Jersey, bro. You can say whatever <laughs> the fuck you want. Like human beings have fucked up the northern white rhino so badly, poaching them for literally fingernail keratin. Yes. You know, that's what ivory, that's what yep. rhino horn is. Yep. Um, that now in can come Colossal and Ben and Matt and all these guys with their big brains and their crazy technology, and they can go, hey, wait a minute. Before we lose this incredible thing, these two northern white rhinos, give us some blood, some hair, some tusks, some whatever, some fingernails. And I'm going to make a male, and then we can put that male back in, and I'm going to make a female and put that female back in, and in 10 years, we can have 150 of these rhinos. Like, that's what it's all about. You know, it's yeah. like we're fixing, we're righting humanity's wrongs, like the crimes we've committed against animals. It's not to stop. Extinction's a natural thing. We, we don't want to stop extinction. Like, you don't want to stop it. What you want to do is stop what human beings have yeah, done where it at doesn't make speeding sense. it up, yes. you know, and, and where it doesn't make sense. Human caused extinction because we wanted a skyscraper where this frog lives yes. or, you know, whatever it happens to be. We just want to mitigate that. And if that technology can be used for that, I think it's the most wonderful technology. So you're in support of the continued nature survival of the fittest. You just want to yeah, I solve just, for 8 billion people in the world. That's it. <laughs> yeah. uh, it. There's a perfect way to put it. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Now, going back to the dire wolf example, though, and let's even talk about the woolly mammoth, which is one they're, they're trying to bring back. Mm -hmm. In this case, you are bringing back something where it doesn't, it hasn't existed in thousands of years. We don't have, you know, the active DNA to be able to do it. So you're sequencing what you can to create it. Do you, do you think that there is there are potential downsides to trying to do something like that. Obviously, we can look at the conservation of current species that it can help with, but do you think there's a downside to creating a woolly mammoth or creating a dire wolf and putting it out into the wild when it's not evolved from there? 100%. There are going to be unintended consequences, just like there are unintended consequences with AI or any new technology. When we got cell phones, now we're all addicted to cell phones and we all hunch over staring at our cell phones. It still allowed the whole world to communicate. 
Yeah. Right. Same with the internet. Now everybody's addicted to porn. <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> like these things come up and there are, un- there are things that you weren't accounting for, you know, that happen. Um, I don't know what that will be, mm. but what I do know, at least from my experiences with Colossal, they're anticipating that there will be those consequences. And it's not like a, okay, we made a hundred mammoths. Let's put them out in Alaska, see how it goes. You know, it's not like that. It's like, it's very controlled. That's why there's a board of advisors like myself, scientific conservation, everything else. You guys got a lot of advisors. On a, lot, company. a lot, a lot. It's grown. Lot. When I was, when I, when I became an advisor, I think there were six of us um, advisors. Yeah, now there's like 6,000. I know it's crazy, but that's yeah. a good thing. You yes. there these summits, everybody talks, everybody has a, t- a place to talk. But the point is like, Let's use a woolly mammoth as an example. I don't know that this is what is Col- Colossal is doing. That's not, I don't work with them day to day. But if they bring back one or five, and they put it in a controlled environment and they study like what's happening in this control, you know, okay, now we can expand it from 10 acres to 100 acres. Okay, now we can expand it from 100 acres to 1,000 acres. You know, and like it's got to be a very yes. slow rollout. And that's, I hope, how we learn how to mitigate the bigger problems that it could cause. I hope. Yeah. Thank you guys for checking out this clip. If you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe and hit the like button on this video. It is a huge, huge help. And if you'd like to check out this clip's full podcast episode, that link is in the description below or right here. And finally, you can follow me on Instagram and X by using the links in my description below.